<laughs> these two guys kind of by accident everybody said if you're doing a history of anything in the area you need to talk to Howard and you need to talk to Jack and so about two years later now that we've gotten two years into our video project I've had the great fortune to meet them both and they're going to talk a little today about the separation the name change and the demarcation so I think that uh, Mr. Gavitt's probably going to ask you about this when you return so you might want to pay special attention. This is all leading up to our TV show, which will be called, and there you have it. It'll be a TV interview format with kids reenacting historic figures with an adult host, and it's going to be funny. So keep your eyes out for that in the new year. But anyway, thank you very much, gentlemen. And I'm going to ask you each to say where you went to school and what your background is. Oh, you want us to get started with the presentation? Yeah, no, I want you to say where, because oh. you're, you're both very okay. accomplished gentlemen. I think they need to know that. Well, I graduated from Columbia High School in 1950, and then I went on to Lehigh University and graduated in 1954, then went into the Air Force for a couple of years, United States Air Force, came out of that, joined public service, electric and gas, then went to uh, North College of Engineering, which is now NJIT for a master's degree management, spent most of my career as a manager in public service in engineering and finance and computers. I first went to Tuscan school and uh, it was too long a walk for me. I always got a ride, just like today. You know, your mother drives you to school. Anyway, I uh, went to the 75th anniversary of Tuscan school. It was founded in 1924 and I was its speaker there in 1999. From there I went to Maplewood Junior High, that was the name when I went there, before it was Maplewood Middle School, just seven houses from my house, the school. I was one of the few that was allowed to go home for lunch. And then I entered Columbia High School, it was only three years at that time, and graduated in 1946, which tells you, if you look at your history, I spent most of the war years here at Columbia High School half the time underground, air raids almost every day. So it was a trying period for me. And then you went on to and college, then I, right? Yes, then I went on to uh, Williamsburg, Virginia to attend the College of William and Mary, which is a good place to uh, major in history. And uh, I still go back every year. And I'm so old that I've been past my 50th reunion for that college. <laughs> And then you also worked at New Jersey Historical Society. Uh, yes, I went on to uh, uh, become the curator of the New Jersey Historical Society. And then uh, a combined, combined job with uh, North Public Library, the New Jersey Information Center, and uh, uh, New Jersey Historical Society. And even though I'm 10 years past retirement age, uh, I'm, I joined enjoy every day questions on the telephone. Uh, people who can't find any answer in the Maplewood Library, they call me up and I might have a book that they don't have. And I, I tell them where to find further information. Right, so we won't give out your number because everybody in the class no, no, will no, be. No. But anyway, My name isn't listed. That's right, that's right. I found <laughs> out the secret to that. So Jack, I know you were going to do most of the presentation of the date information, so would you go ahead and talk a little bit about and give us a little background on yes. what's South Orange, what's Maplewood, when did it change, and why? How's that? <laughs> okay, fine. <laughs> and uh, Mr. Gavitt doesn't know a lot of this, so you'll be able to instruct him. <laughs> I had a conversation with him before this. My job or assignment is to give out the facts, not all the reasons why or <coughs> speculation. And in doing so, I did some research and found there was a lot of confusion and a lot of sources that didn't agree. So I have gone back to the primary sources, like the actual laws that were involved at the time. And in order to understand this subject, we have to go back to when the township was founded. South Orange Township. The township of South Orange was formed April 1st, 1861. And it was formed from two other, essentially two other towns. It was Orange Town, which encompassed everything over to South Orange Avenue on the north side, starting with the west branch of the Warway River. This is the Orange Reservoir, which is close to the Turtleback Zoo. You may know where that is. So this whole border here now has 
West Orange, Orange, and East Orange. Then there was a place called Clinton Township, which doesn't exist anymore. And that was a large township. It extended all the way over <coughs> to the brook, or the east branch of the Rollway River, which flows through the Maplewood Country Club and then on into the center of South Orange. That was all Clinton Township, even a piece on up in here. So 1861, those two pieces came together to form this part of the township. Then in 1863, this last piece came in from Milburn. And this piece was originally called Jefferson Village. And then they built a station in 1860. And they needed a name, so some woman decided there was a large maple tree. They called it Maplewood. And for a while, it was just called Maplewood Station. But Maplewood or Maplewood Station and the Hilton area were all parts of the township, along with South Orange. Then we come along, and you'll, you'll see I've put the dates down here. Um, 1869, which is the date that the village claims is their birth, the village decided they wanted to have an independent municipal government. They were developing pretty fast around the railroad. And so they formed a village from the township, which is this great in area here. However, they were still part of the township of Maplewood. As far as the school system goes, they were not allowed to separate. And they were not too happy because they had no control over the township assessor. And the assessor of the property values determined <coughs> how much tax you paid. And of course, one of the big components of tax is the cost of running a school. So that's always been sort of a thing of contention. 1894, a large piece broke off called Valesburg. Valesburg formed a borough. So that chunk was out of the way before we get to the real crucial point of 1904. 1904, is when the village went to the New Jersey legislature, which has to pass all the laws, and asked to be separated from the township. They wanted complete autonomy from the township of South Orange. So a law was passed, and you'll see here, since you've got my notes, <laughs> on February 9th, the New Jersey legislature enacted a law that authorized the village to separate from the township. And on March 4th, that became official. Somebody must have had some second thoughts or a clarification, because March 28th, another law was passed that said, OK, you can have your own municipal government, but it still has to be the same school district. So you see, the school district isn't a situation where two districts came together. They never separated. It was always, and as a proof of that, there is a high school diploma from 1900, which happens to be my grandmother's. And it reads, can you see where it says high school township of South Orange mm -hmm. up the top? That was the old Columbia High School. And it was located right here. Not too far. You know where the Presbyterian Church is in uh, oh, sure. South Orange? Well, anyway, ball. South Orange Avenue and then Irvington Avenue. Right about there is where the school was. So we got to 1904, the separation. So at that point, the school then became South Orange High School. It wasn't the township or the village high school. Now, South Orange High School. This is my mother's diploma. <laughs> and the, one of the signatures is Henry W. Foster, the one who wrote the book on the history of the wow. school system. This plaque is at the front door as you're exiting out the door. On the left, if you look, guys, you'll see the plaque to dedicate it to Henry Foster. Henry Foster, yes. He was, he was superintendent of schools from 1900 until Columbia High School was built in 1927. So this diploma was June 1922, was the last diploma issued under the South Orange High School. It then became Columbia High School. And Foster is the one that brought in the junior high school system. You probably don't know too much about that, but 
When Columbia High School was built, the school in South Orange had been called Columbia, or earlier than that, Columbian School. And there would have been confusion with the name. So Foster decided the school for junior high school in Maplewood would be changed from Brickleton to Maplewood Junior High School, and the one in South Orange would be changed from Columbia to South Orange Junior High School. So that avoided that confusion. Now, 19, <coughs> so we have two pieces here, South Orange Village and everything that's left of the original township in 1922 decided it was time to change the name to something other than South Orange Township. So it was voted that they change the name to Maplewood. And that's how Maplewood became Maplewood. It became Maplewood in 1922. So you see, we've been all one big happy family all the time, right from the beginning. And, and that's also why we share the same school district. Exactly. Because in 1904, <clears throat> in March 28th, the New Jersey legislature, as I mentioned, passed a law mandating that the village stay within the township school district. So it wasn't a matter of preference or anything. It was a law of the state of New Jersey. They were, they were not allowed to separate. So the key dates, formation of the township, 1861, then the separation of the village in 1904, and you'll find a lot of conflict on that. And in your notes, which are copies of my notes, you'll find where I went to the actual statutes. And it's rather interesting to read them, because the first one in chapter two, it says separation of the village from the township. And then you look on the other sheet, which was passed later on, it says the village to remain in the school district. About the third paragraph down on the page. Thank you, Jack, because I think to this day a lot of people don't know the date. When we were researching the movie, I got conflicting dates, and we had to go this place and that place. So we wanted you guys to have the official right. word. And here is a commemorative issue of the news record, and they took some headlines from the old papers. And here's a 1904 headline. It says, election results could separate the village and the township. <laughs> and it gives some background. They actually had a, they call it the Duffield bill because that was a guy from South Orange who sponsored the bill in the legislature. I had one other diploma just to show you the final change for Columbia High School. Columbia High School, School District, South Orange and Maplewood. And that's yours. John C. Bowden. That's me. it. <laughs> so we have three generations here. Thank you. Well, Howard, why don't you tell us a little bit of something that you know because I think we have a few minutes left. When is class let out, everybody? 305. Oh, okay, good. Jack called me the other day. Howard, do you have your diploma? I said, oh my God, I can't find it. I've been in the same house 75 years. And of course, it's very easy to lose something. That's the story of my life. I never can find anything. But notice how much smaller that uh, diploma is than Graham's. <laughs> you cut your money's worth in 1900. Well, 40 years ago, my biggest investment in buying a book is this book, The Evolution of Public Education in the New Jersey School District by Henry W. Foster. Uh, it came out in 1930. And this is the book that Jack and I have used to study this situation. And it's, it's my Bible. I can't live without it. And I just wish uh, a new book could come out and replace this. I'm beginning to worry a little bit February 1904, March 1904, uh, you know, that's a hundred years ago, only in a couple of months. I found a t-shirt that said Maplewood, 1997, the 75th anniversary of Maplewood. It's a little misleading. I think we should have t-shirts and you young people should get out and celebrate the, the real hundredth birthday of the celebration of the village and the township. Uh, you're learning something new today. I know your parents and anybody older person, your neighbor or whatever, doesn't know this either. And of course, I uh, did a little studying last night, and I can't help but tell you, I went back one page from 1904, and uh, 
sure enough, a famous person is, uh, came to Columbia. Susan B. Anthony, remember her? She's on those dollars that nobody uses. Anyway, on March, on May 1st, uh, in 1902, as an elderly citizen, she came to Columbia High, the one that uh, Mr. Balthus just uh, mentioned. But on the next page, it tells you all the board meetings and the discussions that led up to the laws that eventually got passed here. And a little bit later on, I noticed decay was discussed at the Board of Education. What do I mean? It was a period of criticism of fads and thrills. A girl started to show their elbows and their ankles. They weren't wearing long dresses. They weren't covered from head to toe. And the boys were uh, wearing less and less. Uh, does the, doesn't that sound a little bit new? Um, I know you probably uh, live it up over the weekend. <laughs> you you, you wear, wear something else. Uh, uniforms uh, aren't required now, but everybody wore black back in 1904. Uh, so if you're going to reenact this 100th anniversary, um, you know, I'll, I'll help you uh, tell you what kind of a costume you should have. Also, there were only five students studying Greek. Does Columbia High teach Greek now? No. It's well, it's taken off in uh, 1906. And there was a lot of interesting things happened here. You know, all comments at the Board of Education took place, you know. As far as myself is concerned, um, I do want to uh, tell you, oh, one more thing. A man from J Japan came and visited here. He didn't know enough English. And so he wanted to study here. And he came here in 1903. His name was Wachi Siki. <coughs> And he was a college student, but he was about five years old with a new students. And um, he was looked up to by the students. And he loved Columbia High. I do want to ask a question. Do you still have foreign students coming here? Yes. You have a few? Well, I hope you're learning their language or learning what they went through before they came over here. I think it's very important. It wasn't possible when I was here because World War II was taking place. So here we have the kind of a, in quotes, an exchange to back here in 1903. His picture is in this book. It's 204. It's on reference. I just wish they would reprint it because it's fascinating. I like the back part. That's why I don't know too much the detail which Jack knows because the teachers that I had are listed here when they started teaching. And my former neighbor is almost 100 years old, and she's the oldest living graduate, Mary Huggin Quinso, who's the class of 1922. So imagine someone graduating 81 years ago is still with us. And she's here and all the graduates up through 1927. <coughs> kind of a Snoopy type of thing. Um, some senior citizens don't like to tell their age, but uh -huh, I know how they are, how old they are. Uh, you just subtract 18 from the year they graduated. So it's, it's been a lot of fun for me. And this is what I do uh, as a retired historian and wait for the phone to ring and, and see if I can answer a historical question. Maybe the kids have some questions. Does anybody have any questions about uh, anything that went on during the separation? Go right ahead. What was it like? Like, what did you do for fun? What did you do, like, in school? What, what were some of the things you did as teenagers in South Carolina? What did you do when you were a teenager in high school? What kinds of fun things or activities well, did you do? Well, there's more I I collect stamps uh, and pasted them in a book, and then you got a bond. And, and I stepped on cans because you let those pile up and, and you uh, got rid of your metal for bullets, I guess. And uh, it wasn't too much fun. You have a basement here. The old cafeteria was down in there. And uh, oh darn it, uh, air raid again. And uh, well, you know, the Germans got close to the American 
coast here, and uh, it was lots of that. I did have a class up in the tower, 404, and uh, we kept looking out the window. Oh God, you think a plane's going to come any minute? You know. But the most disturbing thing was your clock. My class was at, at 12 noon, and I thought the plaster was going to come down. Thump, thump, you know, 12 times just above us, and you're in the, I don't think they use it anymore. Well, we couldn't use an elevator. What? It's astronomy club now, but is that what you know, it's the only meet like Well, we, we, we looked for airplanes, but Miss <coughs> Freeman was up there, and of course she uh, arrived out of the elevator, refreshed as anything, and we're, uh, you know, panting and almost had a heart attack climbing up the floor. Flights of stairs. Well, teachers must have rights, you know. What? Teachers must have rights. Yes, but at my 50th anniversary, I was allowed to go in the elevator for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> Any other question? Young lady at the end. Did you go out for lunch? Do I what? Go out for lunch. I uh, at junior high, yes, because I'm only a few feet away. Not here. Uh, no, no, not here. No, none. I notice that you do now, and there's a nice restaurant near uh, Oakland Road, is it? Anyway, I I, I see you uh, enjoying the <coughs> fresh air, but no. Um, if you went to Maplewood Junior High, yes, I did. By the way, anybody from Maplewood live near Salter Place? Where, where is Salt Behind the junior high school. It's near the junior yeah. high school. Nobody knows this, where that is. I live on South Crescent. So. Well, I don't want to embarrass this gentleman, but Salt Place, which is right in back of me, is named after his great grandfather. Because his mother was uh, Ruth Salter, and his grandmother was a Charlotte Salter, and uh, the next generation was uh, uh, Reverend R. Newton Salter. And that's Salter Place. So uh, find out what your street is, and you'll uh, be named after a famous person. If I live on Crawl Place. If you live, live on, on Crawl Place. place right? <laughs> but if you're on the Crescent, there's no Mr. Crescent. By the way, you know what Parker Avenue was Crawl Road before they that's named right. it after some Democratic governor. <laughs> so I have a little bit of problem so, yeah, with the change yeah. of name of Parker Avenue. Maybe but, we'll yeah. do that. Named after a governor. Uh, Howard and I had slightly different interest in high school. By the time I got to high school, the war was pretty much over. I went through the air raids in Tuscan school. I also went to Tuscan. So I was a lot more, I was in the scouts and collecting papers and things like that. But by the time I got to high school, I was a lot more interested in girls and tin cans, I'll tell you. In fact, my brother was in high school and he was in the air raid squad. And uh, he did civil defense work. Young man in the back. Um, well, this is basically a follow-up to Alex's question, but do you know when the first extracurricular activity was introduced? Well, I know this school is the first to have an indoor swimming pool, and there was a swimming club, and I uh, um, came here last year, took swimming lessons again. <laughs> um, I'm not sh much on sports, but I... No, there was a football team, and uh, nothing like today. I think you'll find the answer in, uh, yes. in the book. That's in the library, right? <laughs> yes. That's in the library. That's the number one resource. You can't resource. take it out, it's on reference only. But they didn't have things like golf like today. Yes. That nice lady over there has been golf. patiently holding her hand up. Oh, that's right. Um, my question is for the woman who wrote the book on the history of South Orange. Um, I heard that the Tuxedo Park section of South Orange used to be part of Valesburg um, or North. Yeah, Valesburg for 10 years was an independent borough uh, along South Orange Avenue. And uh, I think Mr. Bowsman pointed when that out. When did it become part of South Orange? Um, it was from 1895 to 1905. Because I knew a lady who was born during that 10 year period, and her birth certificate says Valesburg. But that, uh, I think the answer to the question is that South Orange Village annexed that piece that's from right. Valesbury. And that's what on. she wants to know when yeah. that happened? Uh, 1905, I think. I'm not sure of the date, but I could... Uh, I'll tell you the, the source. It'll tell you exactly when it is, is on this sheet. The um, <coughs> story of the <coughs> New Jersey Civil Boundaries, which is in the library. I know it's in the Maplewood Library. 
It's probably in this library, too. And that is an excellent source for finding out. Actually, what he does in that book is he takes the whole area in, of Essex County, which is originally all part of Newark, and he divides it into pieces like a jigsaw puzzle. And then he pieces all these little pieces together as different annexations took place or different breakups took place. So you can actually figure out exactly when something happened as far as the boundary lines go. Yeah, look at a map of York. It, it uh, looks like a turkey's neck or something. It looks like a tuxedo park's park is probably in here someplace. Yeah, yes, yeah. Um, yeah well, I actually, probably yeah, Vailsburg. The, the book on the history of Maplewood and all that other stuff it was pretty good. Did we, um, did we really invent the golf tee? Yes. Wow. Really? And as a matter of fact, his neighbor, the one that's 100 years old, mm. she worked for the man wow. who invented it. And his daughter was the maid of honor in my mother's wedding. They lived on Lennox Place. He was a dentist in South Orange. Mm -hmm. And he invented, he carved the first one. He, he, he used to play tennis, and then that got to be a little bit too much. He started playing golf. And in the days when he started, they used to have a little sand mound they'd make with their hands for the ball. And then he got tired of messing his hands up. He was a dentist, he didn't want to keep washing. So he carved it out of gutta. Future, I think yeah. it's like a rubber material, the first one, and gave it to his friends, and they all liked it, and they, they built a company out of it, and so they made these golf tees, and uh, Mary Kunza helped package it. By the way, the grandson of Mary Kunza is the owner of her house, 42 Burnett Street. Uh, yeah, across the street from me. Yeah, I would like to know how many students went to Columbia High School at the time uh, when. About 1904, you mean? Yeah, 1904. It's in the book. It's in here. <laughs> How about when you guys went to school? How many were in Oh, there? a lot. See, 500 for me. How many years current? 2004. No, no, wait a minute. Now, you're talking about your class. Yes, I'm talking okay. about my class. Right, that's not, he's talking about the whole school. How about the whole school? How many in the whole school? Well, but you've added, you have added ninth grade since yeah. we've been there. See, there'd there. be about 1,500 when we went there if there were 500 in class. Yes. I don't think mine, yes. mine was 400 and something. I don't think it was as big as his. But grandma's was 12. Uh, <laughs> oh, by the way, she had a 50th anniversary. Uh, and I looked out the window and I thought, oh my gosh, she's entertaining. What's going on? She had the entire class almost <laughs> there at her house entertaining in 1950. In 1950, over 50% 50 of the class showed up. Over 50%. And she graduated 50 years to the day that I did. That's so she was allowed to come to my graduation at Columbia High. It's normally, it was just for parents. And that's when I graduated from William and Mary. So it was a very eventful year. <laughs> were there any, like, animus feelings when the two towns split? What's the question? What was that? <coughs> was there any animosity between the two towns? Great question. Yeah, that's a good well, question. Depends on who you ask. That's what I was told. Well, it, it, <laughs> there was no real... Um, opposition to the separation because the township was under the understanding that the school system would not be separated. Otherwise, they wouldn't have agreed to it. So at the time the vote was taken, it was not a big opposition thing. However, one of the main reasons that it became an issue with the village was that the village had some rather valuable property because they were building some large homes, whereas this area, especially Hilton, was still pretty much farming. In 1904, a good, good section of Maplewood was still farmland. Dairy farms, truck farms, strawberries were growing up here, famous strawberries. So your school tax, or the amount that has to be contributed to pay for the schools is dependent upon taxation and evaluation of property. So the village thought their valuations were pretty close to 100% and a lot higher than this area over here, which was farmland. And they didn't, they thought this value was coming up faster than the assessor was assessing it. So they really were attempting to lower their per unit cost of students. That's the whole reason for this. Mm -hmm. And what, there, there was animosity, though, I was told, at the time of the split. That, and it depended on which side. I also heard there was politics involved. Is none of that true in only local legend? Well, there, at the meeting where they proposed the separation, 
there were members of both South Orange and Maplewood. And there was no real opposition because the understanding was that the school system wouldn't be separated. And that was the heaviest tax burden. Plus, South Orange Village wanted to, at that time, they put in new sewer system, I think it was 1903. They were developing things that you would develop for a suburban town, which the farmers over here weren't quite at that point yet. They weren't ready to put in a sewer system when they owned a 90-acre farm or something. Uh, so it was a matter of uh, whether or not the costs were being split up on an equitable basis, I think. And uh, so since they didn't control the township tax assessor, there wasn't much they could do about the assessments over here. Now, how come they didn't control the tax assessor? He was from a different part, or...? Well, they both had a town... The township tax assessor assessed this part. Right. The village tax assessor would only be um, limited to the village. He couldn't, okay. he couldn't control this area. And, and was there some truth to the fact that people just kept getting confused, so it made a whole lot more sense to call Maplewood Maplewood instead of South Orange yeah. Village and the township of South Orange? I think so. It was, it was something that had been going on for a long time, and of course it was... You had to make sure you were talking about the village or the township when you said South Orange because it made a difference of where you were. One more thing I want you to notice. Uh, walk home slowly. There's manhole covers. Oh, yes, I was going to mention That say the township of Maplewood. No, they don't. The only ones say the south township of South Orange. And if you went to Maplewood uh, Junior High or Maplewood Middle School on... Uh, Maple Avenue there. There's a real oldie there uh, as you cross the street to get to Salter Place. It says the, uh, the township of uh, South Orange. I think that's true of most of the main hills in mm -hmm. Maplewood. Yes. Both of the ones, I live on Jefferson Avenue and I went out and checked just before I came Did over you? and they say the township of South Orange on the manhole part. So there you go for something that was in place back then, and you'll find out the true story. History is below your feet. Look. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, I had a question about just about your opinion. A few years ago, there was an issue brought up about changing the name of South Orange to South Mountain. How did you South feel Mountain. about that? She, you remember a couple of years ago, there was a movement to change uh, South Orange name to... I, oh, they I had see. various South choices. Mountain. South Mountain. Yeah. How did you guys uh, I, I opposed it because it's not from the fruit that grows, oranges. Orange means the house of orange, the, ro the ruling house of the Netherlands. And we have East Orange, we have South Orange, and we have West Orange, and we have Orange. It's named historically after the Netherlands, right. a ruling house. And if you study your history, one of the first settlers up in this area, we're Dutch. Jack's about to say something. Well, I'm surprised nobody asked why there isn't a North Orange. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because, I mean, yeah. looking at the map, of course, if Orange is here, it, that's west of Orange, this is east of Orange, this is south of Orange, what was north? Montclair. Montclair. And that was formed from Bloomfield. Bloomfield. So the, the northern border of Orange was Montclair, Bloomfield, those areas. So that's why there's no North Orange. Was it ever called North Orange? No. No, it was no. no because it was, never, it was never part of Orange. No. See, all of these areas, West Orange, Orange, East Orange, and South Orange were all part of Orange at one time. That's right. So when they split it up, it made sense. And going back, were we all part of Newark? Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. When do you know when that happened? When Essex, it changed from Newark to the to Orange? Well, this is where you need to go to this first reference because he traces it right back to 1606. That's and originally, Newark extended all the way to the foot of the mountain, and they bought some more property of the mountain. So it ended up. Almost the entire Essex County was originally Newark. And if you, you have to know what a place was called in point of time in order to know the history. If you were going back to the Revolutionary War period, you would have to know that it was officially Newark because if you were going to look up residents <coughs> of Ridgewood Road 
it would have been in Newark. Mm -hmm. So the tax records and everything are in Newark. Let me ask you a question. Where would you go to find the earliest records on the township of South Orange? Mm -hmm. now, Orange. Think Orange. about Orange. what... Orange. No. Orange. No, after the township was formed in 1861. Where would you find the 1861 records of the township of South Orange? Mm -hmm. Now think Maple about what happened. Exactly. Where? She's got the right. Maplewood Town Hall. And you They're in the basement <coughs> vault. You mustn't forget Springfield. Asher B. Duran, who's being honored and his family this Sunday. You look him up in the GAB, Dictionary of American Biography, and in 1796, they call it Springfield. Because he was west of the water that goes through the golf course the north branch of the Rollway River. Right. That was the yeah, boundary yeah. line. And that part was Springfield, which became Springfield in 1792, uh, I think it was. But he was, is listed as being born there and died in Maplewood. People read his biography and thought he died in a different town from where he was born. It isn't. It's the same. So we have a very complex history. You've got to think of the date and where are you and, and today, because Hilton was separate. Hilton means hill town, a town on the hill. Go down to look, look up Springfield Avenue. It's all uphill. That's where strawberries were grown. And interestingly, at, um, Hilton got its name because they applied for a post office when they were called Middleville yeah. in 1880. There already was a Middleville, New Jersey. So they had to pick another name, and that's when the name Hilton came in. Hilton had a post office long before the center of Maplewood. Oh, yeah. Maplewood had to go to South Orange for first class post office all the way up until uh, yeah. 1957 or something. Easily. Yeah, they applied for a post office in uh, 1815 and got one yes, in 1957, did. Cyrus Duran. Because 1806, you have Springfield Avenue plowed through as the turnpike. And that was the main road, still is the main road, from York to Springfield. And I was looking at a map from the 16 or 1700s, maybe 16s, which showed Main Street in Orange was 1st Avenue. Does, does this make any sense? Yes. Uh, Ridgewood was 2nd Avenue, and South Orange Avenue was 3rd Avenue. So this is going way, way back. So that gives you an idea, I guess, of what the main thoroughfare There weren't many streets, no. And the, the streets, essentially, Ridgewood Road, and Valley Street were old Indian trails. Really? One going to Valley and the other. Just as a matter of interest, uh, here is a page from the ledger, the minutes of the meetings of South Orange Township, which I copied out of the vault. Of the and I was looking just to make sure I was correct that the Township of South Orange was actually recorded as that and not as something else, because I've read different things. As I was looking at these old ledgers, I looked up, and there are the laws of the state of New Jersey, which is just exactly what I was looking for to prove the case that the law separated the village from the township. So I, I really was quite lucky that day. And I think this should put to rest a lot of the confusion, I hope. Because if you go to sources, you know, you can find Forster's book, and you can find a lot of these booklets that are put out, like uh, uh, More Than a Train Stop for Maplewood and South Orange has put out booklets. And some of them rely on copying from a past booklet, and another one is copied. And somebody along the line copies the wrong thing, Could or gets wrong. the wrong information. So please, if you really want to document something, and if you want it to make, make it realistic and true, find the primary source. If it refers to a law, see if you can find a copy of the law and read it. You know, Usually it's a lot clearer than the interpretation. Anybody from Ridgewood Road? <coughs> well, that was Grub Street. Grub. G-R-U-B. I'm glad they changed it. <laughs> <laughs> they thought this was a comical map that uh, Cyrus Duran made in 1815, and he named the streets like Grub Street. Well, 
He lived on Ridgewood Road. That's where he got his food, yeah. Howard. That's why he called it Grub Street. Ah, oh, Grub Street. And Jefferson Avenue was Dominey Street because that's where the, the, the Dominey lived, the minister exactly. lived there. Exactly. Reason for everything. And that's true when you start searching, and I think Naomi, your book points this out as well, that all the streets in town have, have relevance, meaning. have meaning, yeah. either at the source of the churches, if you go to the churches, even the synagogues, yeah. the names of the original parishioners are street names. Spear Drive and Comstock Place is because of two guys who uh, argued this problem back in 1904. Um, why was the uh, archi the original architectural design of Columbia High School in the uh, Encyclopedia Britannica? Well, it was so great. First one to have a swimming pool, first one to have a tower, working clock with bells. Uh, somebody tells me 404 is astronomy club now. Yeah. Yes. Uh, do you actually go up there at night time? And how about last week when you had the eclipse of the moon? They were probably up there. Yeah. Or some other location. Did anybody go up there and look at it from there? No. Uh, no. Uh, no, no, it was outstanding. Oh, no. outstanding. <coughs> and even though, sure you know, it's uh, 75 years old, it's still outstanding. Oh, yeah. Because you people are in it. Mm -hmm. Any oh. other? Questions from our two guys, or Naomi, actually, for that matter, Ms. Fafner as well. Can I just talk about the social life? Absolutely. <coughs> this is actually from Mr. Foster's book. Uh, beginning in the 1890s, physical activities were seen as positive for healthy development of children and young adults. In 1913, however, there was concern about the new freedom in dress and of animalistic dances. Corsets and long dresses were being put aside as they interfered with athletic activities. Animalistic excitement was also a concern, as officials noted that musical rhythm of the wilds of barbarism stirred the pulse. The refined waltz and polka were out, replaced by the favored bunny hug, turkey trot, fox trot, and shimmy. In March 1913, the Board of Education stated that all social activities should include only polite dances and exclude the turkey trot and all others of similar <coughs> character. So there you have. Well, so, so are they discussing <laughs> rap music now? Yeah. Here's a uh, headline. This is a commemorative issue of the news record. But in here it discusses some of the different points of view. And it, it said the election could result in the separation of the village. So you're saying there was no animosity? It well, was just simply a matter of practicality based on tax? Yeah, so, and there were several attempts after 1904 to separate the school district. It didn't die with 1904. The village went after it several more times, and they set up a select committee, I think it was in 1906 and 1907, about the third try. And uh, the committee came to the conclusion, well, okay, maybe the cost per student was <coughs> being heavier on the village than the township. However, within the village itself, there was quite a disparity. There was quite a difference between certain areas of South Orange cost per student based on their property valuation than other areas. And it was even greater than the difference between the village and the township. So when they considered everything, they decided they might as well leave it alone. And another great consideration was the high school was here in 1904. Is that your bell? You'd have to build another high school. Is uh, the, before, I mean, we don't want to keep you, I know you're out early on a Friday. Does anyone uh, have any reason why we shouldn't thank them with applause? <laughs>